There is professional Seth Davis. You just saw it. He is pulling a curtain in some hotel somewhere where he has been going over the numbers. (laughs) I'm sure it smells like the committee over there because Seth Davis over the last 20 years (laughs) has climbed into the granules of college basketball, Stugatz, and he's one of the voices on Sunday who's going to tell us about the 40 teams we don't know we're all going to be gambling on over the course of the next few weeks. And so all he's here for, all Chris Cody wants from him is, hey, Seth, abandon all your journalistic principles and just tell me who to bet on. Tell me who's going to surprise people (laughs) because he likes the matchup. But Seth has to be a journalist. He has to be integrity. He's been doing this for 20 years. Stugatz, how many names do you associate with? This guy's going to tell me who's got it right, who's got it wrong for 68 teams. How many, how many names can you mention that you associate like this one with this person's information is going to be good? Seth Davis and Jay Billis. Is it too, it's not just two of you. Is it, who else is on that list, Seth? Who else is on it? That's, oh, there's a lot of guys. Andy Katz, Mike mm. DeCourcy, mm. Uh, of course, the people that I work with, Clark Kellogg, Jay Wright, uh, Candace Parker in Atlanta. And you know that Chuck and Kenny have been studying college basketball very closely. No, <laughs> Seth, that's bull- <laughs> Seth, that's bullshit. <laughs> Charles wings his way through the tournament every year. It is the most amazing slalom job I've ever seen. He knows nothing about what he's watching, and he's doing it for eight hours a day, right. and it's just the fraudster. Like he doesn't, right. he's just doing research before he, the game. But he knows basketball. Yes. He knows what he sees. And, and Kenny, they know, they know what they see. So, um, yeah, it's good. Uh, it's, it's the good greatest gig. Man. It's the greatest it's the gig. Be, it's, the, it's the best. But what, what's this thing about gambling? No, who's gambling? Are people gambling? Chris Cody, here. Let's let's lift the veil away from from this nonsense. That's give me happening. the value, Seth. Yes. Give me all the Who's value. the look, Seth? I mean, Seth, give us fast and easy value, cheap and easy. We haven't talked to you in a while. Get to the good stuff. Well, you know, my, my only rule with this is no blaming. Like my buddies, they call me from Vegas. They want to know my picks. I'm like, no, Seth, no blaming. Seth, stop. We it. all know the person who knows the least always wins the office pool. I, I went. Yep. I'm kind of kicking myself. Look, I get like literally six minutes to fill up my bracket because they hand us the sheet of paper from the committee. We're 10 minutes to the start of the selection show. I got to make my picks and go through all my comments. And and I, I think that's the best way to do it, uh, frankly. But I've got a lot of chalk late in the tournament, okay? Houston and UConn are, are, are the two best teams in this tournament. Purdue is tricky. I'm not going to lie. Purdue is tricky, and they drew two tricky teams in their region if they play them in Creighton and that Tennessee. That slab of meat, yeah. ED, is just going to get yeah. in everyone's way. No, that slab of meat, that fouling slab of meat that can't be defended, can't be guarded, plants itself in the key and is Yao Ming's body, that cannot be allowed to ruin this tournament, Seth. Cannot be allowed. I'm sensing some some Zach Eady uh, backlash. Are you in, are you in that camp and oh not appreciating Come on. the big maple? He would he would have been drafted. I mean, he would have been drafted ahead of Michael Jordan in 1984. I am not underestimating <laughs> him. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing about Zach Eady is he lives at the foul line, and I know this is a big conversation. I've talked to people, including inside the Big Ten, that say they don't call enough fouls against Zach Eady. Okay, what are you going to do? The guy's seven five two seventy. And he knows how to play at this point because he's been there forever. And so you got to either stop him from catching the ball in close or foul him. And he's become a 72% foul shooter. But I'll give you, uh, let me give you a nugget about Creighton. First of all, they have um, the best uh, defensive center in the Big East and one of the best in the country in Ryan Kalkrenner. And they are number one on Ken Palm in defensive free throw rate. They are the best team in the entire country at not fouling. And they have some dynamic guards of the kind that Purdue has had trouble with. So, look, we all know the blueprint with Purdue. ZD's going to roll out of bed and get you 24 and 10. I mean, that's just the reality. The question is, it's not about him scoring from the foul line. It's fouling everybody out. In other words, if you're Creighton and Ryan Kalkbrenner gets a second foul with nine minutes to go in the first half, it's going to be a long day. But there will come a time, and probably multiple times, when the EDS, as I call them, Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, Lance Jones, who was not on the team last year, transferred from Southern Illinois. They are going to have to win a game for Purdue with their three-point shooting under the most immense pressure that an athlete can face. And then Tennessee, of course, has a dynamic score in Dalton Connect, as well as some big, strong guys inside. Jonas Adu is a good defensive center. If, if you're going to drop teams that Purdue doesn't want to see, Creighton and Tennessee would be on the short list. Having said that, I picked Purdue to go to the Final Four. So what the hell do I know? Idiot also sounds like what you could call the Zach Eady haters, I think, right? The idiots. 
Um, my question the idiots. Though, idiots. Idi- 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 idiots or EDS. That's an excellent distinction. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Because you have to be an idiot. You have to be an idiot to, to, to hate Zach Eadie. Oh, Go get a life. Seth Dave. Go I, get a life. Idiot. Seth, I, wait, I don't, it's not that I hate him. I don't hate him. He's just a, but he's a, pro, he's a problem. He's a plague. I, if, if, there's a tree trunk. It's an ocean liner moving through the lane, and college kids are, are, are draped from his thighs. And, it, like, and, you, and, you, and you, what are you going to do? He's stronger than everybody. Uh, and this is a problem? All right, well, that's fine. Look, you, you, you can say you hate him if he's playing against your team. You love him if he's playing for your team. I went to Duke with Christian Leitner. I know about player hate. <laughs> My question was that you said you have Purdue in your Final Four. Does that mean you have a Purdue-UConn championship? And would you take UConn or the field? I all, That's a great question. I always take the field over one team. That That's just the reality of, of the NCAA tournament. There was actually – an interesting dialogue because we've had a big three in college basketball with UConn, Houston, and Purdue, which has, you know, mostly separated, come back a little bit to the field in the last couple of weeks, but those have been the big three all season. And it was, do you take the big three or the field? And I would definitely take the big three. Um, Let me just say something about UConn. So there've been two teams that repeated as national champs since John Wooden did it in the seventies, Duke in 92 and Florida in 2007 and in both instances those teams brought back the previous team basically intact uconn lost three starters and they lost five of their top eight scores and they are the heavy favorite going into this thing you can't say enough about the job that dan hurley is doing i like houston now they you know they got blown out um by iowa state i'm not surprised they lost necessarily i think iowa state's really good absolutely got screwed on the seating by the way um, not necessarily being a two versus a one, but being the lowest number two, which has ramifications because now they have to go to Boston potentially to play UConn. Seth, I was not Seth, necessarily Seth, can I stop you for you, yeah, go ahead. Can I stop you yeah, for, for just a second? People just yeah. want to hear his most screwed on the seedings, right? Like everybody wants that. Like whatever you, just, you want. Yeah, but it's I, I, I want double digit seeds that can make it to the final four, like Utah State. I agree with you on Purdue, and Utah State could face Purdue in the second round. I'm telling you, Seth, I love the Aggies out of the Mountain West. Twenty seven and six overall one of the great coaches in america and danny sprinkle they have experienced guard play they could stretch the floor a uh, floor great osabar is a fantastic player landon breachley also a very very good player they have guard play they play tenacious d and they could score with anyone in the country what says you I, i'm with you if you're looking for double digit seeds i mean there's not going to be many of them you would think about making a final four uh, you know, if Drake were not in UConn's region, I might add them to the list. Well, but hold on, Seth. Uh, Seth, if, team, can I stop you? Yeah. May I stop yeah, sure. you? I believe that your analysis will not be as good as Stugatz's analysis on Drake. So let's. Uh, <laughs> let, I believe that he think he thinks Drake is better than even you think Drake is. Ah, the Bulldogs out of the ah. Missouri Valley Conference, twenty-eight and six overall, sixteen and four inside the conference. Great coach, Darren DeVries, and a little nepotism. I love, this time of year, a team with a little nepotism because his son, Trevor DeVries, is one of the great guards, Dan, in America. Plus, they have Aiton Wright. I'm telling you, this team is deep. They have guys off the bench. They play defense. They can stretch the floor, and they can rebound and score with any team in the country. How about that? Well, aside from pronouncing the name wrong and getting saying Trevor instead of Tucker, I'm with you. That's Mark. I'm with you and your deep deep knowledge. And your deep knowledge of Drake. Uh, I am with you. Thank you. You know, Tucker DeVries reminds me of Doug McDermott, who also played for his dad, uh, which is interesting. To quote uh, Joe Buck, of course, the son of a great uh, sportscaster himself, I'm in favor of nepotism as long as we keep it inside the family. So... um, (laughs) Yeah, I like Drake, but look, you're talking about having to go through Iowa State, Illinois, and UConn that's to get tough. to a Final Four. Yeah. But but that's why they're double digit seed. Let, let me give you a couple. Uh, I mentioned Grand Canyon. Now, I, the it, for, for all you bracket for 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 all you bracket filler outers out there, look for the automatic qualifier teams, the the higher seeded teams that won their regular season in the conference as well as the conference tournament. Um, in other words. Um, you have uh, Duquesne, which is a great story out of the Atlantic 10. They were sixth in the conference and then got hot in, in, in the conference tournament. Did they get hot? Did they get lucky? Whatever it was, you know, Zygazunt, they're in the dance. But a team like Grand Canyon, which not only dominated uh, the WAC and then won the WAC tournament, really good coach in, in Bryce Drew, they've been to the tournament three of the last four years. Colgate has been to the tournament five years 
uh, in a row. And there's another team uh, that escapes me that uh, had been there uh, three years in a row. So um, uh, Drake has recent uh, NCAA tournament experience as well. Um, I like uh, a couple of teams coming out of the South, okay? James Madison. James Madison opened the season. They won at Michigan State. Everybody said, what the hell's wrong with Michigan State? James Madison is what was wrong with Michigan State. There you go. I get my own sound. He's giving you a pick. Th- He's giving you a pick. Classic 12 5. Give us another pick. Give us another pick. Classic people want, 12 5, people by the way. Fill out brackets, okay. Seth. Seth, okay. stop dancing around it, all right? Nobody, okay. nobody wants. Yes. Thank all right. you. Uh, no one wants the reasons. Another 12 5. No one wants wow. the reasons. Yes. No one wants the reasons. I totally agree. McNeese, another team that won a ton of games, run through its conference, run through its conference tournament, Will Wade. And then my. Upset special, which if you think about it, it wouldn't even be that upsetting, is Samford over Kansas. Say it with me, everybody. Oh, wow. Samford wow. Big one there. over A big Kansas. One. America's going to fall in love with Buckyball. Stugatz, give Seth. Jayhawks. Give Stugatz, are you with me? Give Seth well, your UAB pick. Uh, because the team, I love UAB. The Blazers, Coach Andy Kennedy. They haven't been this good since Gene Barto was their head coach. 24 and 11 out of the American Athletic Conference. I love their guard, Eric Ganey. I love Efron Johnson as well. Some of the best guard play in the country. I'm telling you, this team can make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. Don't be surprised, Seth, if the Blazers find themselves in the Sweet 16. I'll, I'll be surprised, but nothing can, can, can shock me. Again, you're, you're only because you're going against only because you're going against my rule about winning the regular season. I think they were fourth, uh, the fourth seed, um, in that conference tournament. Right. So, um, look, they had, any, they had to anything win to get is possible. I mean, yeah. yeah, they had to win to get in. Uh, look, I think San Diego State's really good. <laughs> I think they've underperformed at times. Aztecs. Um, but you know, I'll, I will say this: Auburn, even though I've got them in the Sweet 16. Auburn's vulnerable in the sense that they're one of those teams that they don't have to win one way, but they kind of have to win one way. They want to beat you 95 to 90. If, if they have to beat you 65 to 60, it could be a problem. So San Diego State will force them um, to, to, to beat them 65-60. But, uh, you know, going up against UConn, obviously my, my pick to win it all. Seth, but, you know, I, Auburn's, I, got, I, Auburn's got to play a good Yale team. I Yale ca- has been solid in the Ivy all season long. Don't yep. count out the Bulldogs. Okay, don't uh-huh. count out don't the Bulldogs. All right, so Yale is also also Stugatz. I've got to get him out here in fifty seconds. Here, I got to squeeze all of the <laughs> all of the juice that there is to be squozen here. Squeeze me, baby. Squeeze uh, me, baby. Scar- you said screwed on seating, and I want to I want to know what the audience wants more. Is it Stugatz's t- double digit dogs likely to make it to the Sweet Sixteen, <laughs> or outraged Seth on screwed? on seating what's the better 30 seconds outrage seth i think i okay. do yes I, I i just think look it, it with first of all if you're a bubble team i don't want to hear from you i just don't i don't want you complaining about the net i don't want you to tell me analytics are bds don't put yourself on the bubble don't put that game in the hands of the refs sure. there's only so many slots and there's always going to be a few teams left out and they're always going to feel screwed and i wish coaches would be just like hey our fault. If we had won more, we wouldn't be in this situation. What the committee did with Iowa State was wrong. And the reason is, if you look at Iowa State's body of work, they were very comparable. Their record in the top two quads in the net was identical to North Carolina. They had better wins than North Carolina. The one thing they had was a weak non-conference strength of schedule ranking, but their overall strength of schedule ranking was comparable to all of the other candidates. So, Many people don't know the committee actually seeds the entire field one through 68 and places teams in a geographic region as they go down the list. So there's a pretty big difference between having to play UConn in Boston and having to play North Carolina in Los Angeles or even Purdue uh, in Detroit. So I think the committee was like trying to send a message about the importance of non-conference scheduling. I don't think you should make these. I don't think you should be sending any messages. I think you should be voting on on the teams. But so, otherwise, hey, man, everybody loves to complain about this stuff, and by the time the games dip off, nobody cares. Let's get this thing rolling. We are out of time, Seth, but Jessica has something for you to close it out, and I will tell the audience, he's been a mainstay at CBS Sports for the NCAA tournament, like I said, 20 years. He's also the co-author of the bestseller. Rex Chapman is actually doing good work out there uh, showing people uh, the innards of his vulnerability. It's hard for me to live with me. Uh, check out his new Substack. It's called Seth Davis Writes Again. But, Jessica, what do you have for Seth? Seth, as we close this out, Indiana State was screwed. True or correct? False. 
Don't oh, put yourself on the bubble. No. So, hey, hey, hey. Indiana State was the third team no. out. Okay. We had we had five teams, an incredible number. Five teams won their conference tournament who would not have been at large candidates. Last year, I think there was one. The year before, there was two. So Indiana being the third team out, if either one or two teams had done that, they would have actually been in the field. So the, the real estate got kind of squeezed there in the end. Everybody who's like the first, second, third, fourth team out, they they all have a case to say they were screwed. Win and you're in, baby. You put the sick in sycamores, sir. Uh, Terrible. Hey, you're an hey, idiot. Hey, hey. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. You got to let Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the book. tournament. But Drake said. I wrote, a book on, I wrote a book on Indiana State. When March went mad, go to Amazon and buy Brutal. it. Brutal. Brutal. You can't keep. Uh, that. It was anti-Mexican. Avila needs to be in the tournament just because. Well, then win his tournament. No. <laughs> right. If they're so good, how come they didn't beat Get out of here. According to, according to Stu Gotts, Drake is the 86 Celtics. So what do I know? <laughs> He bluffed his way through the whole thing. I mean, 28 and 6 in the Missouri Valley Conference. Yeah, just so you know, it's DeVries, DeVries, oh, DeVries. Whatever. Tomato, tomato. We have failed today as a show so far. No one more than Chris Cody, executive producer, because uh, this show has gone this long. Lucy, you're looking at me, but what I'm about to say, everyone in the audience will agree with, everyone in this room, every employee at Metal Lark will agree with what I'm about to say, which is. Us going this far into the show without playing the video of Amin El Hassan, our basketball expert, taking a jump shot at a celebrity all-star game, in which not only was it a terrible air ball, but what he did with his follow-through was an international shame that got him dragged by the entirety of the internet. Hmm. The fact that our show has not done more with this, that we have not reached out to Amin and woken him up, that we have not made fun of the hand gesture at the end, which is a bit abracadabra, but is no one's idea of basketball expertise and follow through what is that? it's a finger roll from the easiest three-point shot in uh in the nba and the internet is totally mocking him and we've waited two hours to do so uh billy hey, I, I mean yeah. chris cody should be punished for this don't you think in terms of lack of judgment um no we had to get to the aaron donald stuff so yeah. it's good that we did this the thing about this clip because i i I'm not going to say that I didn't have multiple group texts that were going on yesterday commenting on this video that were sent to me. Um, the hand thing is an obvious one, right? I think, and you can't see it on this shot because of our lower bar there, but he has a situation where his feet are in opposite directions at one point in time. like Not like they're opening out or they're facing in. Like One has his heel down on the ground, and the other has his toe <laughs> down on the ground, which I don't understand how he shot the ball that way at all. He also has like the under armor, like the long sleeve under armor under his jersey, and then like the Dwayne Wade like compression pants under his short. There's just He's a, trying. a lot. He's trying, and Hoop Herald trying too hard. Well, Hoop Herald reports uh, while playing this video, and he is getting excoriated. It's got millions of views, millions <laughs> of views. I mean, the follow through. This is a legit human being who has a platform that is criticizing NBA players. Make it make sense. <laughs> I think the best part about the video was you click the video to start, and I think everybody pretty much knew exactly how it was going to end, <laughs> right? Like, when you see the video, you know exactly how it's going to go, but it's kind of like, how are we going to get there, you know? If I were a mean, I would have just said, that's not me. Yeah. Um, His face isn't in the video. I think he could have gotten away with it's it. It's a heady play. AI. It looked like him, though, but the hand gesture, it is being mocked internationally. And, uh, you know, people are writing, all again, getting dragged. Amino Hassan used to be on ESPN, worked for the Suns a long time ago, number one NBA analyst on the Dan Lebitard show. This right here may have ended his career. <laughs> I'm a fan of his, but I can't see anybody taking his basketball analysis seriously after this. And then, because the thread continues, tells you all you need to know, Dan Lebitard is a goofball. Of course, he's going to have goofballs on his show. I can't protest. <laughs> that guy gets the show.
he claimed the ball was slippery. Oh, Because Jess's it. tweet hit the nail right on the head. It looks like a circle changeup that he's throwing. We're trying to reach him. It did look like a circle change. He's hiding? It was a flutter ball. It was a bit of a knuckleball. He, he's not hiding. He sent me an audio message. I want you to play it. We're oh. now having difficulty scheduling him all of a sudden. All oh. of a sudden, it's difficult Convenient. to yeah. schedule. I, I, Amin's got, I got to go do bully ball with Rachel Nichols. I'm very busy. Oh. I don't have time to... Uh, to Who cover signs up my the checks, tracks. buddy? Like, that's what you hit him back with, Dan. If you're yep. him, you're like, hey, big show, not bully ball, okay? Here's the bully ball. Get on my show or get the hell well, out of here. Well, Billy, can you come listen to these audio messages so, to, so find out whether he's excuse-making or not? Because he's it's sending Amin. Me- he's excuse-making. Okay, but I need to – we have an hour to reach Amin, and it appears he's in hiding. And I don't blame him because the internet is embarrassing him. Now, get- we, we have his on-court explanation. Are you, he sent a new audio note, like, from this morning? Yeah. Yes. Okay, because yeah. we have his yes. explanation on the court right, let's if we it. wanted to play that, too. Yeah. Hit it. So this is the holy month of Ramadan. Idiot. And y'all picking on me. I'm talking to you holy. I'm not eating, not eating and drinking away. It is. Number two, I haven't played basketball since the 2017 NBA Finals. That's true. Okay. So, like, that's a long-ass layup for me to come out of retirement, run up and down here. Number three. Them small balls are really light, so it's like it flies. You know what's funny? When they had the whole Sabrina versus Steph conversation, Eddie Johnson told me it's harder to shoot with a women's ball than it is with a men's ball. That Sabrina would have shot better if she shot with the men's ball than she would have with the women's ball. You know what? I tend to agree now. Having shot with a women's ball, everything is light. So my hand was all going flippy blobby. Number four, look at these injuries. This is my pinky finger. It does this. I have a broken wrist. I got a bad back. Number five, y'all anyway. <laughs> What's wrong with his pinky finger? <laughs> He's jacked up. He really cranked up the excuse machine. Flippy floppy yeah. was one of the excuses. <laughs> I don't Ramadan, know. Ramadan. I don't. I mean. Well, Ramadan. Yes, I'm. I, I didn't have the uh, strength that my flutter ball would normally have. It's from, a great place to go. From, I will again say, Tony will vouch on this. <laughs> I, I will again say to if you've never been on an NBA court, you don't have any idea how far that rim actually is. Because they make it look easy, these giant people who can do it well from out there. But it is further than you think it is. Many of us would look terrible taking NBA three. Look at that finger. But not as terrible as Amin, our basketball expert. Uh, Stugat, I need some help with a couple of things because we're going to try and track down I mean, we have tracked down the Long Beach State coach, Dan Monson. He was fired on Monday, and now they're in the tournament. It's, I love it. We're going to talk to him uh, because it's just a funny story. He's fired on Monday, and then they win, and they're winning. They let him keep coaching. Right, through the tournament, not expecting he would win the conference no, that's tournament. Correct. Now he's in the NCAA no, that's correct. tournament. That's yes. correct. It's weird. So you're fired, but okay, well, we'll write it out. He's got to come back now, right? I, I, I want to talk to him about this. We'll see. I don't think he can come back. I think he's been fired. I mean, come on. They haven't hired a new coach yet, right? He's in the tournament. Like, how deep does he have to go in the tournament to get his job back or get a job somewhere else? How about that? But he's been fired. He's in the tourney. You rehire someone. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Can you not? We'll ask him. He'll be on later in the show. But I wanted to, I didn't know if you knew this. Did Billy, did Jessica take my phone outside? Yeah, so here's what's going on. Uh, Amin sent two different voice notes and said, this is the only way that I can be reached, which is weird because he could just call in if he's doing this on his phone. But he, he he's not doing that. He sent two voice notes, but your phone hasn't been updated, so you can't download them. And then you don't have something that can be screen recorded either because you got to do the update there. So we're, we're having the technology department figure out how to get that audio off of your phone. In the meantime, there's a risotto drought. What? What? Risotto is in danger. Ooh. Why? Uh, because uh, the, the fields where they're made, and there's such a drought on the fields that it's 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 getting so pricey. You've got uh, you, we've all noticed, correct? I mean, everyone's noticed the price of everything has gone up, and food is now unreasonable. Restaurants everywhere else now. I don't know if risotto is endangered, but it's you something. You mean like arborio rice, right? Because like the risotto is the cooked. That's it's, the thing that gets everyone chopped. It's close to being to endangered. In okay, so it turns out in 2022, the worst drought in 200 years struck the Po, the river that feeds the system of canals that irrigates the paddy fields. As a result, Italy lost 26,000 hectares of rice fields, and production of the grain dropped by more than 30%, and things haven't improved wow. since. Mm. What? The, uh, Stanley Tucci... Go fix that. I didn't know that like risotto was like, I don't know if you guys noticed over the past couple years, like Christmas tree prices have been crazy, right? And the reason that Christmas tree prices, really? 
Never. Well, so Christmas tree prices were crazy for a while because there was a shortage of Christmas trees. The reason there was a shortage of Christmas trees was because of the economy like eight years ago or something because that's the amount of time it takes for a Christmas tree to grow. So situations back then made it so that now there was a shortage of Christmas trees and then prices went up. So it seems like risotto might be in the same boto. Put it on the poll, please, Juju. Is risotto in the same boto as the Christmas tree? I'm this voting is yes. Great news for chopped contestants. <laughs> Let's tally well. up your votos. <laughs> this guy gets it. Yeah. You guys, so you guys ever seen like my cousin Vinny? Chris, uh, you're not supposed to say what the <laughs> was that when you're the executive producer. That's what your, was that? Uh, let me play some that video was, here. I think there's a ghost in here. Let me play some video here for the, spread. for the audience, uh, Stugatz. I don't know if you saw this this weekend, but uh, I couldn't believe. I was legitimately surprised that Sammy Sosa, after all of these years of rehearsing for this question, hadn't thought of what might be his counter when someone asked him a follow-up. When you mention these mistakes, will you be specific about what the mistake is? Is it time for you and Tom Ricketts to sit down to get back into their good graces? Well, like I say, you know, I'm a mature man. Uh, I, th I, you know, I think that uh, it's a possibility that we can do that. I'm open. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, I have, like I said, I have a lot of misunderstanding in the past. But now I'm a, I'm, I'm a real man. I feel great. So I recognize my mistake. So, hey, why not? Are you telling me that you recognize the fact that maybe you did do steroids? Um, <laughs> this is, um, like I say, um, this is um, um, not a question that I expect from you. Is it time for you? <laughs> <laughs> you let him right to the question. <laughs> Maybe you did do steroids is the hardest question he's gotten in 20 years on the subject, and he was not at all prepared for it. Um... Not a question that I expected from you. <laughs> we wanted to bring in a legitimate expert here on this basketball shot because she's been covering a quarter century. She's been covering the heights of basketball greatness. She's interviewed everybody who's ever mattered in the sport. She's got uh, a number of different professional relationships with all of the people in basketball who matter. And Rachel Nichols can break down for us uh, whether or not Amin is being a coward here, hiding from us, <laughs> uh, because the audio messages I'm getting from Amin are not helpful in terms of saying whether he's going to be on the show to answer questions, Rachel. He's got bully ball. He keeps saying, I have bully ball today. I don't have time to answer your questions about the jump shot at the Celebrity All-Star Game. Can you guys please put that in the corner of the screen? Just have it running for Rachel so she could tell me what she saw and how much our colleague deserves to be roasted. Because, Rachel, they're questioning his expertise. Nobody can cover basketball well if that's how they shoot. I mean, I wonder if he can walk well if that's how he sh shoots. I mean, it's that was offensive to the human senses on so many levels deeper than basketball. What, what was he doing? What was happening? What was the elbow? What was the finger flick? I mean, I, I really want to know what the basketball name for that is supposed to be, according to him. And frankly, we have gotten no answers, right? There have been little bits and bits on Twitter or whatever, bleeps and blops. But we need Amin Al Hassan to take some responsibility for what the hell happened over there. Chris Cody, can you help me, please? Because she's got a new show, uh, Bully Ball, uh, with Boogie Cousins. And maybe Boogie can beat it out of Amin because... Uh, we are he's now avoiding us. We are his main paycheck, not bully ball. We are his main paycheck and he's avoiding us. Is will will you and Boogie ask the hard questions on bully ball? Oh, I mean, you've met Boogie Cousins. He's not afraid of a confrontation. So I, I just think that the referees were just a prelude to what's going to happen today huh. with Amin. I, I just, I, I, I can't, I, I need to know what he was thinking. I mean, I'm really getting my interview hat on here, Dan, for this later today, because I, I just feel like I need to go into his childhood, maybe, to find out what trauma Chris, he underwent Chris that caused Cody, that shot. Are we not going to get Amin? Is Amin now not going to be efforting. us, Dan? We're efforting. <laughs> All right. Regardless, uh, it, whether or not Amin is there, Bully Ball is going to be, yes? Is that a requirement of an NBA analyst to have a good shot? Like, I'm guessing Brian Windhorst is going to shoot some air balls from the three-point line as well. I'm but just guessing. But it's the form. It's the form that's problematic. The follow it's not. Yeah. It's not that he missed it. Anybody right. could shoot an air ball. It's right. not. It's the embarrassment of how is this person critiquing the athleticism of anybody when he looks like a crooked, rusty uh, fence uh, breaking apart and splintering at the fingertips. Okay.
It's a judgment thing also, right? We're supposed to trust his judgment on the NBA if he also believed that he could go out and shoot that basketball. I have so many questions. Do you believe any of his excuses? No. And by the way, there were so many of them, weren't there? Religious. Like, I have religious this excuse. Fasting. That excuse. Fa this excuse. But, five excuses. <laughs> but but fasting, his God is to blame. His sacrifice on behalf of his God. Give him credit there. That's a heady play. I mean, it's I unbelievable. Mean. <laughs> him him unbelievable. He we he checkmated us. Really? Your religion is why you look like that shooting an arrow? But, 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 but on the same weekend. Kyrie Irving hit one of the great shots of this decade in the NBA, and he is also fasting for Ramadan. So I want nothing. I want nothing of that from Amin. Okay. Uh, Stugatz, we don't know. Do the you, you were traveling. So did how much information did you get from the weekend? Like, how informed are you on things like Kyrie Irving? Because uh, what the shot he made over Jokic, to, to have Luka Doncic be in a position where he seems awed by what he's just seen, uh, it is fun, Rachel, to see uh, stakes in the West this late in the season yeah. and the top of the sport caring because, oh, those are your champions there, and, and beating them still means something. And Kyrie wants to get back from the beyond of what the last three years have been. So you tell us, <laughs> when you're when you're watching uh, – yesterday Stugatz when you're seeing any of this are you being caught up in the storylines are you missing it because you're traveling no I did go away this weekend I was in Chicago again the only thing I read up on is Grand Canyon I love them the antelopes out of the Western Athletic 29 and 4 17 and 3 in the conference I am telling you Tyson Grant Foster TGF Dan one of the great guards in America they have senior guard play they are deep they can stretch the court they can score with anyone and people don't know this Dan they don't know this Bryce Drew, head coach, championship pedigree. They play defense as well as anyone in the country. How about that? Don't be surprised if the antelopes wind up in the Elite Eight. <laughs> Rachel, are you sophisticated enough to see that Stugatz is all bull there, that he's just making things up? Tyson and, Grant that he's, he's got like three or four yeah. facts, and all he's doing is just, uh, I mean, it's not inaccurate what he's saying, but it's bare minimum information that he actually has. He's cheating with cue cards. Experienced guard play. <laughs> I just think like that he thinks if he throws in like a nickname initials, he's like, oh, yeah, no one's going to doubt me because yeah. I've got the nickname. Correct. Uh, well, Rachel, can you explain this part? Because one of the things I love about the evolution of sports content coverage is that what you're doing every Monday uh, with Boogie Cousins, you could have worked with anybody. You've made a specific mm -hmm. choice here about who you want to analyze basketball best with so so that you provide entertainment, but also information for the people who want maximum sort of geeking out on basketball from, from somebody who I think – People don't know the way you do, so you're you're introducing a Boogie Cousins to people that I don't think many people have seen before. Yeah, no, I mean, Boogie is an incredibly smart person in general, so he's great talking about basketball because he can explain sort of the expertise he has on a very personal level. He's also played with everyone. That's the thing. I mean, he had the superstar start to his career, four all-star appearances, all of that, but when he went into the journeyman phase of his career after he got hurt, he played on that Warriors team that made the finals with Kevin Durant and Steph Curry and Draymond Green and Clay Thompson and the whole crew. He played on the Nuggets with Jokic. He played on the Bucks with Giannis. So he has moved around and been up close and personal with so many current players and situations in the NBA. That's one of the best parts of this show is that he sits there and he goes behind the scenes and tells you, well, this is what happens with Clay and this is what happens when he gets down on himself from a like TV perspective, he's a lot more like Draymond Green or Charles Barkley in that mold of just will say whatever he thinks, doesn't sugarcoat anything, but has a lot of smarts behind it. Can you explain to us, I think we did that all seamlessly, the co-host of <laughs> Bully Ball with Boogie Cousins is Rachel Nichols. I mean, we'll be there later today. You can catch new episodes every Monday. And I would tell you to subscribe to all the Smoke Productions on YouTube. They are close to a million subscribers, and they're building out their own empire with Rachel over there. But from what you saw this weekend, Rachel, and the specifics mm -hmm. of the league media narratives still spend too much time with Steph Curry and LeBron when it seems clear that the young people in that sport, the future of that sport at a complicated time in America, it is their time now.
And I'm wondering, as you, a, a veteran media analyst, see that Adam Silver suddenly gets dragged over the weekend because Curry, LeBron, is fouled up by technical issues. And I'm seeing Adam Silver criticized, and I'm like, really? He's responsible for that. But it feels like the league uh, has a bit of a crossroads in terms of what it's going to do with its next generation of stars. Well, you and I lived through the whole next Jordan thing, right? The Harold Minor years, as I like to call them, where everybody was going crazy, thinking the sport was going to die and was it going to be Grant Hill, but then Grant Hill got so hurt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're a little bit with that now. We we have what the next generation after the Curries and LeBron is, right? We have that already. That's Luka, that's Jokic, that's Giannis. But because it is a group of players that sort of came in and uh, played in the shadow of probably one of the greatest generations in all of basketball, those guys have never sort of as popular as they are and as crazy accomplished as they are, they haven't captured people in the same way that LeBron and Steph did. In fact, you have to go a little bit younger for that. And that's where you get the John Morant. That's where you get Donovan Mitchell. That's where you get some of these guys who really are just sort of popping off of your screen. And the fact that John Morant in particular isn't here right now because of his injury and earlier because of his suspension, I think that has delayed a little bit some of that actual transferring and also that middle group as well sort of makes it a little bit awkward. So it's just sort of a different time where some of the absolute best players in the world have not become beloved in the same way some of their elders have been. But I, I do think that we have so much exciting basketball that people get into it once the playoffs are there and that meritocracy matters and that's what some of the backlash you saw over the weekend was to me i'm really loving this couch situation you got going on here where did you get it thank you i i by the way i want to compliment myself because for the last two weeks (laughs) thank you for the last two weeks i have managed to wear uh shirts that are the exact color of this couch so i've been sort of a floating head um, style the, the and couch, today the couch I is to very, dress but it's, myself it's properly. It's very cool though. The couch, you, the, your studio setting looks velvety. It is. It's it's velvet to the touch, Dan. So you know, you, you can come down here and and do your show anytime. I'm upset though because this show, more so than any any other show, deserves the floating head. I mean, I want the floating head. We're not getting a floating. head. I mean, yeah. You know, maybe have me back in a couple of weeks. We'll okay. see. But I again, I got myself dressed this morning, and I really think I deserve many pats on the head for that. It's much earlier here than it is out there. Rachel, do you know about color specialists? Because I was learning about this in the break. It turns out that you have experts you can go to that can give you the colors that work best for you. I want to know, Billy, what color you think you are, what season you are. Is that how they say it? Like, are you an autumn or something? And also, you where like would you cool go for this like color an- analysis? Yeah. Well, so Jess and oh. Lucy were catching me up on this, and we're kind of <laughs> workshopping the idea of having a color specialist come in, and maybe we can do a whole segment or episode around it. You're welcome to join us if you would like. But I didn't I even know like this was a to thing. I would be part of that. Okay, perfect. This please, please. Dan, you can't come with it. Rachel, I think you would be a perfect like green emerald yeah. also dan you're paying for this yeah that that please was a confirmation i that want the we're going into approved. we're in business with rachel now if rachel wants to do things we need to be doing them with her so if colorist special content is what you guys want to make i'm all for it let's do it what are we waiting for dan i feel you're a deep winter I want a set like yours. I'm jealous that our stuff doesn't look like that. Our stuff, like, look at where... Just turn off the lights. It's just No, but look, it's so much mood she's giving off. There is so much attitude behind her. And and all of it is, uh, it's welcoming, it's inviting, it's warm, it's charming, it's stylish. It's none of the things we are. Because Amin is also a frequent guest. I was told he was trying to break into what it is that we were doing there, that he was causing. Uh, I see. We're trying to locate Amin. So he'll be on one of the shows. You've promised to answer the questions if we can't get to them. You've promised that Bully Ball will get to the bottom of whatever Amin was trying to achieve at that game. Yes, Bully Ball is on the case. We have a full investigation going. I have questions for Stu Gatso, by the way. Okay. Okay. You're going to quiz him on the weekend? Well, I just I heard him chat earlier that he mm. was traveling, quote unquote. Yeah. Which, you know, we got to dig into that a little deeper. What, it was too hot to play golf at home or what? Uh, no, I was uh, traveling to see my daughter's lacrosse team play. That's all. That's oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, that's that's fair. So Thank so you. I want to know how much you paid attention to sports over the weekend, oh, being great. as you are one of the premier co-hosts in America of one of the top sports shows that over the last decade. I'm so, not you know, be I'd like to hear a little bit about what you do. 
I'm not oh, gonna please. take I'm not gonna take a quiz. <laughs> I'm not gonna take it. <laughs> He's gonna what are take you? it. You're too no, good? go ahead. Fire right. away. How many, fire away. This is how many questions away, yes. do you have here? How what is the nature of the I questions? Have... All right. So I have five questions. Wow. I feel that that someone of Stugatz's level <laughs> maybe can answer them. We'll okay. see. We'll okay. see. We'll see what happens. So okay. we'll so basically, but just just to be clear on what we're trying to do here, Rachel is an accomplished journalist, Stugatz, that you share this space with. She has worked all of her life and is meticulously prepared and thorough when she's being asked questions. Mm -hmm. You are now going to ask him five basic sports questions for the weekend to, to see basic. if our Monday so morning nervous. host, Stugatz, yeah. after 30 years of doing this, tried at yes. all this weekend to inform himself? Yes. The antelopes. Yes. All right, number five. Yes. <laughs> I want to know which one of the following coaches was recently fired, Stu Gatz, despite a winning percentage of more than 55%. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Coach at Stanford, Gerard Hayes. Mm -hmm. Coach at Long Beach State, Dan Munson. Mm -hmm. Coach at Michigan, of course, Juwan Howard. Mm -hmm. Coach at Vanderbilt. Mr. Jerry Stackhouse, which one was recently fired despite having a more than 55% winning percentage? Long Beach State. Really? Really? Two-time yeah. Miami Heat champion, Jawan Howard, he nothing forgot, for you? He didn't even mm. notice Jawan Howard got fired. Wow. How? Still got. Wow. How, what happened? I mean, you I just had one story from the weekend, not the other? Long Beach State, yeah. He, he lost Monson. 26 right. games, Juwan Howard. He was <laughs> he was as bad as Patrick Ewing. It oh. fell apart very quickly. Number four, Rachel. I want to know, Stugatz, a fake Woj bomb tricked the broadcasters of a particular NBA team over the weekend. They started talking about how Woj tweeted that a legend of that franchise had retired and unfortunately found out later it was all just fake interneting. So will you tell me which broadcast it was? The Warriors broadcast? Was it the Wizards broadcast? The Knicks broadcast? Or the Bulls broadcast? Give it to me. I'm going to say the Bulls broadcast. Ding, 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 ding. Congratulations Thank to God. You. Uh, Thank you. Is this because you were in Chicago this weekend? Uh, no, it was just a guess. He was just guessing, <laughs> and he guessed correctly somehow. Uh, and, and so this is a big one here. It's best of three, even though he so guessed to this. Five, and I'm still we only have time for three. We only have time for three. What's the third one, Rachel? Huh. Okay, all right, all right. Um, I want to know which of the following parents this weekend of college tournament games, which parent went viral for their son in a conference tournament? LeBron James. Eddie House, Dennis Rodman, or Julia Louis-Dreyfus? Oh, wow. Not LeBron. Oh, man. That keen insight into the sport, Dan. Can I hear he my... He was able uh, to just knock that wait, one out. You don't know. Like, I want to hear the choices no, you again. Either, you on. either know or you don't know. You well, either know I, I, what no, the no, story I, is. I, I want to hear the choices no, again. Are you, are you guessing or are you, do you uh, know? Perhaps. I just want to hear them again. What are the choices? Okay. LeBron James. Yeah. Eddie House. Right. Uh, Dennis Rodman uh -huh. or Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Wow. So I have to eliminate. This is what I learned when I took tasks growing up. You eliminate two, so but, I have. So you don't know. So you don't Eddie know. House. No, but you don't know. Eddie House. Get, oh, I do don't. Know. Don't. oh, I do know. You know. Oh, I do know. Oh, I do know, Dan Lemonard. The game doesn't work when you're right, Stugatz. <laughs>